Hey guys, it's Ro. Welcome to another Nerdy Nummies. If you like watching Nerdy Nummy videos or these baking videos, give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, click subscribe and ring the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video, because I am posting a lot this year. I got a lot of requests from you guys to make something Black Widow Themed. So for today's recipe, we're gonna be making a Black Widow themed cake, and it's gonna be so perfect because today is actually Halloween. So super spooky. There's a full moon tonight, so I hope you guys check it out and enjoy. Let's get baking. Let's get started. So for today's recipe, we're gonna be making a red velvet cake because the new movie is basically all about the Red Room, which is also called the Black Widow Program, which is like a top secret training facility for the world's deadliest, most elite assassins in the world. So don't tell anyone, but like, you guys get it. Also, I'm gonna be posting all the ingredients and their measurements in the description down below. So if you want to follow along at home and bake a creepy Black Widow cake, you can. The cake that we're making today is gonna to be a two-tiered cake. The bottom tier is gonna be eight inches and the top tier is gonna be six inches. Now, the ingredients that I have out is if you just wanna do one layer of each, but if you'd like to double the layers, have a double layer and a double layer, which I'm gonna do, just double the ingredients that I'm using. First step to making our delicious red room, oop, I mean red velvet cake, is we're gonna whisk together our dry ingredients. In a large mixing bowl, you're gonna mix together your flour, cocoa powder, baking soda, and salt. I love red velvet cakes, but the thing I love the most about a red velvet cake is it's kind of a chocolate cake. If someone says they don't like red velvet cake, they're kind of telling you they don't like chocolate cake, and then I don't know if we trust them. You know what I mean? I don't know if they can be in the red room with us. I think it's one of the requirements that you have to like red velvet cake to get in the red room. Then whisk together until well combined and set off to the side. Now, in a medium sized bowl, you're gonna mix together sour cream and some milk. Pour together and mix up our dairy. I keep mixing until it gets a little smoother. When you first combine the two, it looks more like cottage cheese. And then as you continue to mix, it just gets smoother and smoother. Nice and smooth, well mixed. Now set it off to the side. Next, in a large mixing bowl, we're gonna cream together our butter and sugar using an electric hand mixer. It's really important that your butter is at room temperature. You don't want it to be cold, still from the fridge, and you don't want it to be melted. Don't melt your butter. Mix on a medium speed for just a couple minutes until it gets light and fluffy, like a cloud of sugar. This is awesome. Check this out. Look how light and fluffy. It's just a butter sugar cloud that I want to be floating in. Oh yeah. Next part's a little bit tedious, but worth it. We're gonna be adding four eggs, one at a time. Add your egg, mix it up, add the egg, mix it up, add another egg, mix it up, add another egg, mix it up. Also in between mixing, use a spatula to scrape down the sides. Make sure everything's well incorporated. One last scrape because we're fancy like that. Last but not least, to our butter mixture, a little vanilla extract. Oh yeah. Mix it up one last time. Oh, that smells so good. All of our ingredients are ready and we're gonna put them together, be a big, happy, red velvet cake family. We've got our dry ingredients, our butter ingredients, and our dairy. Now you're gonna alternate adding your dry ingredients and your dairy ingredients to the butter, starting and ending with dry. This process is just gonna give you the perfect cake batter. Pour in about a third of the dry mixture, then mix it up. Pour in half the dairy, mix it up. Second third of the dry, mix it up. Other half of the dairy, mix it up. And the last of the dry, mix it up. Don't forget to use your spatula to scrape down the sides. Once everything's well mixed, you add the last ingredient, which is a little bit of red food coloring dye to make our cake a red velvet cake. All right, I'm just gonna pour in a little bit, just eyeball it and mix it in and see how much we'd like. Ooh, look at that color. Cake batter is all ready to put in our pans. Both these pans, I've greased and lined the bottom with a piece of parchment paper. I just cut the parchment paper in a circle to fit right onto the bottom, and this will make it so your cakes will not stick at all. This is a pro tip. They will pop out so easy. Pour in your batter. 
Look, we've used all of the cake batter and just poured it evenly between these four cake pans. We've got two eight inch rounds and two six inch rounds. Now heat your oven to 325 degrees and pop your cakes in the oven to bake for about 30 to 40 minutes. Keep your eye on it. You can stick a cake poker or a toothpick in and as soon as you insert into the middle and it's clean, there's nothing sticking to it, the cakes are ready and done. Once your cakes have baked, give them plenty of time to cool. We are gonna stack and frost them and you don't wanna do that while they're still hot or warm from the oven. You really wanna let them cool off so it doesn't melt the frosting. We've got our two eight inch cakes and six inch cakes, which I've just leveled off the top. You can level using a cake leveler or just a sharp cutting knife. Just hold it steady and be careful. Now it is time to stack and frost. I love this. This is the building of the cakes, the building of the tiers. Here I have a 12 inch cake plate which is gonna be our base. It's a little bit bigger than our cake, just gives us a little room to serve. And a six inch round, which will fit directly under our cakes. I do this, it's totally optional, but it's just like a little bit more support for the top tier, kind of, kind of like a bra. It's optional, but it, it gives you more support. Let's start with the base of the cake first, the big cakes. I'm gonna take my cake plate, place it on top of a turntable. Turntables are optional, just makes it a little bit easier to frost. I scooped a little bit of buttercream icing into a piping bag to make it a little bit easier. And this is a little trick. Sometimes I put a little dollop of buttercream right in the center of my cake plate, kind of like glue. It's edible glue. And you're gonna take a layer of cake, stick it in the center. Now just pipe a layer of icing on top of the cake. I like to pipe Type an outline and then zigzag fill it in. Now using an offset spatula, apply gentle pressure, go all the way around, pew pew pew, and smooth out your icing. If you've leveled your cake and it's a little uneven, you can level it out with icing. Take your second layer of cake, we're gonna flip it upside down, the crummy side down and the bottom side up. Flipping the top cake upside down creates a lot of smoothness, flatness, and is less crummy. Ice the entire cake. It doesn't need to look perfect because we are gonna cover it with fondant. So this frosting is just gonna act like a glue for the fondant. Now we're gonna do the same thing, stack and frost with a smaller cake, the six inch round. Boom! Both cakes are frosted and now I'm gonna pop them in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes to chill and set. And while they're in the refrigerator, I'm gonna roll out my fondant. Cakes have chilled, I just popped them out of the refrigerator and I've rolled out my red fondant right in front of me. I just sprinkled a little bit of powdered sugar onto the surface so that it won't stick and used a very large fondant roller to roll it out. Gently roll the fondant around your pin and transfer it over to your cake. I used a little too much, that's okay. Gently pull the fondant down so that you won't get any creases and gently press the fondant to touch all sides of the cake. Now using a sharp cutting knife, cut off the excess fondant around the bottom of the cake. Now we're gonna do the same thing to our eight inch larger cake, but with black fondant. Now we're gonna make some little decorations using fondant as well. So for the bottom layer of the cake, we're gonna be making four of these Black Widow logos. I made the logos by rolling out a little bit of white fondant and black fondant and cutting them out with circle cookie cutters. So then you're gonna stack these on top. Did you? And to get fondant to stick to fondant, you just use a little bit of water. Paint it on the top. Then to get this really cool design, I just traced out of paper this little shape. And then I placed it over a rolled out piece of fondant and using a sharp cutting knife, cut out the design. Using a paintbrush, I'm gonna paint on here and then attach it to the black fondant. Oh yeah. That's a Black Widow badge if I ever seen one. And this is just a helpful little tip. I usually let them sit out for a few hours to harden, but you can also lay them over a piece of paper towel. The fondant will slowly bend, so when you're sticking them on the sides of the cake, it will line up perfectly. 
we're gonna be making a black widow spider out of fondant. Roll a larger ball of black fondant for the body and a smaller ball for the head. And I'm gonna attach the head like so. Then dab a little bit of water in the back of our red piece of fondant. This is the iconic teeny red hourglass. Boom, danger, we already know. Now we're gonna attach all the little legs and eyes. To make the legs took a little bit of time, but it was very simple. I just took black fondant and rolled it do, 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 into a log and then cut the pieces and stuck them together and let them dry in this shape. Stick three of the legs on the head of the spider and then this long back leg on the body. Now I'm gonna do the same thing I did to this side to the other side. I also stuck on the two little eyeballs. Boop, boop. And spiders have more than two eyeballs, but they have two bigger ones in the front, so I featured those, because I didn't want to roll 100 bowls of fondant that were like these big and then I'd lose some everywhere. All of the fondant work is done, and now we are gonna decorate the top layer of the cake to make an edible cobweb, and this is something that I have never done on the show before. We're gonna be using melted marshmallows. I just heated them for 30 seconds in the microwave, now I'm gonna let them cool for about 20 seconds, and as you can tell, look how melted they are. Now using a spoon, mix together till it's really smooth. Wow. I just wanna eat this right now. This smells so good. Oh my gosh, look at this marshmallow fluff. You only need about 20, 30 seconds for it to really cool down. All right, so you're just gonna stick your little fingers in there, pick up a little bit of this marshmallow fluff, ball it together, stretch, and stick. Oh, this is so fun. Why have I never done this before? This is the coolest thing. Oh my gosh, this turns into like a resistance band. Oh my, I can't even open my hands. Some people tell you don't play with your food, but I disagree. This is the highlight of my day. What? Okay, I'm gonna put a little spatula here. Let's see if I can pick it up. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh my gosh, I can't even get free. Okay, we'll do a double hand. A double hand sticky grab. Oh, I missed. Oh, shoot, I missed. Oh, no, what have I done? You know what? Boom, sticky grab, got it. <laughs> okay, but seriously, I'm gonna go clean up though because I've kind of, I've made a mess. We got our two cakes and we're gonna stack them together. For a little bit of support, I have these little dowels. You can use a large boba straw or wooden dowels, whatever you have in your kitchen. I really like to do this. It gives the top tier support. Okay, here we go, here we go. Oh, the lift is happening. Oh, this is terrifying. This terrifies me every time. This is some real stuff, no, okay. I'm to for this. No, this is just all instinct. Oh, here we go, just eyeball it and place it into the center. Boom! Oh, this is so cool, this is so cool. It's really coming together. Our cakes are stacked and now I'm gonna be piping some trim around the bottom of each cake to make them look more polished. Ta-da! There you have it, a two-tiered red velvet black widow cake. I'll be posting the recipe and all the ingredients in the description down below, but I'm also gonna be taking a lot of pictures and posting them on Instagram and my website, so you can go check them out there. And if you guys make a cake like this, don't forget to tag me. Use hashtag Nerdy Nummies or hashtag Row Recipe so that I can find it and like it and love it and give it all the, the, the loves. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, and ring the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. Let me know in the comments down below what recipe you would like to see next because I'd love to bake it. Bye!